So today I want to talk a little bit about games as designed experiences. And this is a concept we've been developing to describe the way that games are more than just a media or a resource or a text that you learn from, but something that you learn within and you learn through interacting with. So good games and good learning are really possibility spaces that allow you to step inside of them and explore and experience new kinds of things and ultimately become new kinds of people. So good learning within a game is, again, more than just kind of spitting back to a teacher or to someone else the ideas that you think you're supposed to have learned. But it's about jumping into a space where you can explore new ideas, where you can test out hypotheses, where you can develop new kinds of knowledge and ultimately become a new kind of person. So my own thinking about this goes back, oh, 30 years, I guess, to the Commodore 64. And I was playing a game called Sid Meier's Pirates, which was an awesome game, where you got to learn through being a pirate. So fast forward about two or three years later, I'm in history class and we're studying the Caribbean and all of a sudden I find myself in class during discussion knowing all kinds of things about being a pirate that made really no sense at all. So the teacher would ask us things like, what were the Spanish goals for colonization? And can anyone here draw a map of the Caribbean and describe where the Spanish main was? And I knew all of this stuff because years earlier I had been a pirate sailing around the Spanish main. And you would do things like sail into ports like Antigua, visit taverns, build up a crew, you had to learn about the different kinds of ships. You had to know if you're going to sail into a city, what kind of a city it's going to be. Are they going to be friendly to you? Or are they going to be at war with you? You'd have to know when you're going across the ocean, if you see a, a ship, is it likely to be a pirate? Or is it likely to be someone from the French? How many people are going to be on it? What's it going to be? And this is all the kinds of things that you learned through being a pirate. The naval battles, and it's kind of fun to look back and look at how primitive some of these graphics were, but you had naval battles, you had sword fights, you got to do many of the kinds of things in a style, very stylized version of what a pirate was. Um, some of the really fun ideas looking back is you had to use latitude and longitude for dead reckoning, and these were all things that you learned um, in the service of being a pirate. Now, in terms of being educational, um, uh, Sid Meier's Pirates is clearly an entertainment product. But it's a very interesting metaphor to think about how do we design experiences that let you use information, like let you use information about geography, about the Caribbean, in order to do really cool and interesting new kinds of things. So as an educator, something we think about is could we design educational games like this? So Sid Meier's Pirates is not a game that I would immediately jump and bring into classrooms, but this sort of metaphor that you could role play being a pirate, where you could use information like knowledge of, the, of geography or of the Caribbean to do interesting kinds of things is a really compelling and provocative provocative model for learning. Now when I talk to educators, a lot of times the first thing I'll hear is, well that's easy, of course it's interesting, you're getting to be a pirate. And um, at first glance that's, that's true. Now the other thing I'll come back with is, well why can't we do more things in education where you actually do get to learn through being ex interesting kinds of people and having interesting kinds of experiences. With modern technology we can do these kinds of things. Um, but second, if you step back and look at even games about pirates, not all of them are fun and not all of them are interesting. Now what makes a game like Sid Meier's Pirates a really good game and what, what might differentiate it from those games that reviewed less well? Uh, well, one really key thing is the way it orchestrates time. So when you're playing Sid Meier's Pirates, all of the events are orchestrated to give you a very smooth experience and to give you a very smooth learning curve. And this is the kind of feature that we can use as educators regardless if we're building a game about pirates or about being a scientist. Um, it's interesting if you look at some of the competing games in the genre, they would do things like say, hey, let's give the player the experience of walking around in a 3D world. So if you go back to this tavern screen, um, when you sail into Sid Meier's Pirates, you just have these choices, right? You're not walking around into a, a 3D world. Subsequent games gave you that kind of um, experience and that sort of possibility. What's interesting is when you play these games, you realize, oh my gosh, I want to be a pirate. I want to be doing sword fights and sailing ships. I don't want to be walking around a 3D space trying to figure out where I am. Being lost is, is not a particularly exciting part of being, being a pirate. So when you analyze games like this, what you find is that they're really instructive in terms of how do we design experiences for people that highlight the key features, get rid of some of the boring parts, and then really focus on giving you a learning trajectory. And Sid Meier, one of the most famous and accomplished designers, had the, has this way of thinking about games that's saying good games are about a series of interesting choices. And so what we do as designers is try to think about how can we capture the interesting choices in a domain, present them to players, and then make it fun to explore them and explore their consequences. 
So in Sid Meier's Pirates, one of the first things that you do, and this is just minutes into the game, is that you have to decide, do I want to sail for the French, for the Dutch, for the Spanish, or for the English? Each one has different strengths and weaknesses, and as you play the game, you start to understand how some of these choices are consequential. So for example, if you're sailing for the Spanish, it means that you can never attack a Spanish port, which can, makes it much more difficult to actually uh, earn gold and plunder. So the first thing he does is gives you a potential quest. He describes how he's about to send a ship out to San Juan and gives you kind of this idea of, all right, what do I want to do? Do I want to go with him and work with him? Do I want to maybe, as soon as it sails out, attack it? Um, it gives you also this preview that something you could do is also maybe visit San Juan or sack it yourself. Um, long term, he presents some new kinds of options. He's got this daughter that you could potentially marry. Um, you can earn rank and reputation. So Pirates is really elegantly designed to orchestrate time. So the, the way that choices unfold happen, say, in the first minute you create a character. By four minutes you're leaving town and already doing something interesting. You're attacking a ship by about eight minutes, and then about 15 minutes attacking a town. And notice that the first hour, hour and a half is constructed, so you have a really compelling, interesting campaign experience. The game is taking these short, mid, and long-term goals and setting them up to really pull the player through the game experiences. And a lot of times when we talk about addicting games, this is one of the things that we really mean. What we mean is that they are, give us these cycles of of choices that are compelling, where we're curious to find out how they resolve, and they stack these and intertwine them so that you're never bored, you're never looking for things to do, you're always confronted with more than one interesting option and more than one interesting thing that you want to see how it plays out. Now, packed within this game is a lot of information about ports like San Juan, right? And this is what I was meaning when I go back into school and realize all of a sudden, oh, I know a lot about, say, San Juan. I know where it's located. I know that it was Spanish. I know it was one of the kind of hubs of the region. Um, and then if you want to in the game, you can read more about it and learn much more about it. And as educators, of course, it's very tempting to focus on this kind of factual information that games like this present. And that certainly is a valuable thing. But more than that, a game like Pirates lets you think about a, t a particular historical era as an interlocking system. And you start to think about, well, what would be, how would it be different if you were, say, to remove a couple of cities? How would things play out differently? And this is the kind of systemic level understanding that games seem to do particularly well. And they're the places that we want to look for as educators and think about how we can actually use them to support learning. So as this game progresses, you're learning new kinds of things. After about an hour, hour and a half, you've become pretty good at attacking ships. You then explore how do you attack towns, how do you next, how do you rescue your family. And all the while as you go through this, you're mastering different kinds of domains in the system. So you're mastering naval warfare at the beginning. You're probably also getting a good sense of the map of the, of the Caribbean. You're starting to master land warfare and thinking about what kinds of, say, weapons they had at the time. Um, and as you go through, each one of these aspects of the game system is being unlocked and you're learning to become a master of that system. And this is what we mean about designing experiences. So games don't just throw all of this at you, but they let you explore them at a reasonable pace and it's largely self-determined. So you can go back and, and practice more if you want to become more of a master, say, at, at naval warfare. Games are really good at letting these systems unfold and letting you explore them and become masters kind of at your own pace.